What's up, y'all? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's about to be that time. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Hey, warning, I don't fight fair. I scratch and I bite. A few moments later. <sighs> no, can't do this. Reach physical limits. <sighs> Savage. And we're back. One Piece chapter 1070 is out. And I am happy to be here at a new digit with you guys. And speaking of new digits, we're at 30K subscribers. Boom. We hit it during the stream. It was an epic stream. It was awesome. We also hit 200 members during the stream right before the holiday. Couldn't ask for anything more. Great Christmas present. All right. Happy holidays to anybody who observes a holiday during this season. And I hope that it treats you well or has already treated you well. This is the last official chapter of the year, but the first chapter of the year does tend to leak early. We'll see how we're going to tackle that depending on when the chapter comes out. But the main thing that I really want to get into today is who's coming to Egghead? Let's talk about some Vice Admirals. Let's talk about Kizaru. You know, that was another one right there. How long have I been saying Kizaru's coming to Egghead? And he's finally here. Another one. So let's get into all these possibilities. Here we go. Kizaru has made it to Egghead, all right? We knew he would be a part of this arc. We were told that he had left early, so he's arrived. Now, it seems like there are, you know, quite a few ships behind him as well, but I didn't expect it to happen this early. Oda is ramping this up, and I am excited. I love this. One thing I need, I've talked about it a lot, Kizaru versus Zoro. That's the end game fight, but I would like a tease of it here. It would make sense if we did get some sort of Zoro versus S. Hawk as well. We also need to find out what fruit was given to S. Hawk, all right? Because S. Hawk does have green blood, which means that they have a devil fruit. We just don't know what it is. My vote, my hope, my pipe tinfoil dream is Jozu's fruit. He's going diamond. But could it be a Don Quixote do Flamingo family fruit? It was brought up in the stream what if he had Mach Vice's fruit? And that was how he was able to strike that mountain in Amazon Lily. Maybe, maybe. I'm all for Diamante's fruit as well. But Jozu's my top choice. This is all also setting up a Impel Down 2.0. We got confirmation that Senor Pink is alive, that he is Impel Down, which of course makes sense because Doflamingo is there. What have I also been saying? When we get that Doflamingo Seraphim, it will have the Ito Ito string string fruit. This makes sense because now Hancock, the S snake seraphim, has the Mero Mero fruit, which is blowing my mind. Okay? I, I was not expecting that fruit to be with that seraphim. And considering how coveted that fruit was by Blackbeard, this can open up a wide array of doors. He does not need Hancock now if he can get a authority chip for S Snake. Whatever he wants to do with that fruit, he's going to be able to do with the Seraphim. This is Oda's out. This is wild stuff, this is good stuff, okay? But who is Kizaru going to bring with him? Now, what I'm fully expecting is a recreation of chapter 420 which was the Buster Call chapter. And at the end, we get this beautiful spread of five Vice Admirals that have arrived to Eni's lobby. Those Vice Admirals were the boy Mamanga. You know we love Mamanga here. Yamakaji. You know we hate Yamakaji here. That boy is a bum. Onigumo. He's cool. He's cool. Doberman. Don't care. Strawberry. Yeah, you do this. All right, who's coming with Kizaru? Strawberry makes a lot of sense because Strawberry was also, like Kizaru, a part of the Fishman Island flashback and had interactions with Fisher Tiger. We could get 
some sort of lore between Kizaru and Strawberry that they, you know, work together a lot. Strawberry also has a gigantic head. Fitting, considering we're dealing with Vegapunk. So Strawberry is one of my top choices to be a part of this arc now. Uh, Mamanga. I, I just want it. I just want it. Let's get let's get Mamanga in the arc. Doberman makes sense. All right, we're just getting the Buster Call boys here. Uh, I do not want Yamakachi at all. We're going to have to replace him. So, you know, we're going to do our top five here, just like we had in Chapter 420. Yamakaji is out. Onigumo would be a lot of fun. I'd like to see Onigumo in the arc. So basically, four out of five of the Annie's Lobby Buster Call Vice Admirals I'm expecting. I am not expecting Stainless, Vice Admiral Stainless. He is the one that approached Buggy and let him know that his uh, Warlord status was revoked. Crocodile shortly arrived after and all of those boats sank. So kind of skeptical on whether or not Stainless will ever be seen again. Savage. It's one piece, but hey, Crocodile's a sad. The replacement Vice Admiral that I would like to see for Yamakaji because Band was turned to stone on Amazon Lily I don't think he'd be showing up to Egghead right now, is, and we've been talking about him being in this arc, Smoker. I would like to see Smoker be one of the people that is pulling up. What I really want Smoker in this arc for is, one, he is not sword, but he is also becoming increasingly anti-government. And I'm fully expecting sword to show up. We've talked about that, Helmeppo, Prince, all those guys that we saw at G14. They're pulling up as well. What I want to see out of all of this is a confrontation between the staunch Marines, the ones that are going to follow Kizaru, like no matter what, and the ones that are going to break away. And one of the biggest people who needs to break away is Smoker. He was set up in Alabasta. You know, you told the, uh, the Marines and everything that they could go to hell because of everything that happened and how they wanted to cover all of that up. He was sympathetic to the way Fuji acted during Dressrosa, his actions there. We had Punk Hazard, where he reluctantly teamed up with, uh, you know, Luffy and Law. So here, following the events of Punk Hazard, where we now know that Vegapunk was responsible for developing a cure for these children. Once Smoker learns the mission is to kill Vegapunk, this guy who went out of his way to save like a hundred children, Smoker is not going to be on board with this. So I would love a scene where it's like Vice Admiral versus Vice Admiral, where Smoker is actually part of the Protect Vegapunk team. And he is going up against like, you know, Momonga, Onigumo, something like that. He's holding them back and working aligned with the Straw Hats and Vegapunk. That's what I want. Sword also. Helmeppo going against some of these like staunch Marines as well. Their goal is to get a Seraphim, Sword. They want at least one Seraphim to go up against Blackbeard and save Kobe. So I think maybe we do leave here with at least one Seraphim with us. And not necessarily with us, but at least on their side. Maybe Cypherpole holds on to some of them, and then, you know, we only get one. Whichever one that is, maybe it's S Snake, and that's what gives you know, Blackbeard, the ability to take S Snake because he's taken the authority chip that Kobe had because Kobe had to have had an authority chip because he was controlling the Seraphim at Amazon Lily. That's all Blackbeard needs. Authority chip, S Snake, boom. Mero Mero no Mi. If he needs to de-stonify somebody or put someone or something into stone, he now can do it in about 30 chapters. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe sooner with the way everything's going. But either way, this is the Sabadi Archipelago parallel of the post time skip era. Things are culminating to a head. Egghead is probably going to get destroyed and we are going to have this mass exodus off of this island. But on top of that, we have the real Kuma showing up. During the archipelago, he sent the heroes away, flying for three days and three nights. What I would like to see is Kuma come in and e-Honda all of the Marines. I'm not joking, all of them. All of the staunch Marines. So that they're all flying for three days, three nights, which allows the heroes to get away safely and build their forces and figure out what they have to do, get closer to Laugh Tale, everything. They've got three days, three nights without Kizaru, without the Vice Admirals, without you know any Marines in the area on their back. Whether they go to Elbaf, 
they figure out the last Poneglyph, they go up against Blackbeard, it doesn't matter. It's going to be... It's going to get crazy. <laughs> it's really going to get crazy. Another big Marine that I would expect in this arc is Fujitora, naturally, because he is constantly talking about the SSG. Although, I have always been Team Fujitora turns against the world government before the end of the series. Could we see Fujitora versus Kizaru in this arc? I want it. Garp would be a fun addition to the arc. I'm not going to put too much stock into that, but since we're dealing with a lot of S.W.O.R.D., and I believe that Garp is the leader of S.W.O.R.D., it would be fun to see him here, albeit he is retired, so we may just save him for Final War. We need some giant representation. LaCroix could possibly show up. He did eat lunch with Garp at the Reverie, so maybe he's good. But then again, Strawberry was also there, and Strawberry is definitely bad. I am highly expecting Vice Admiral Dalmatian, and I am expecting him to stay Team Kizaru on this one. Vice Admiral Yari Sugi could also play a role, uh, you know, if we wanted a deep cut, and definitely Team Kizaru because that man has a negative drip and I do not need him being a good guy at all. Savage. Vice Admiral Komiel is an interesting one considering that his base was the closest to Lulucia and he even had people from Lulucia working for him. So if he were to find the truth about all of that and considering he also bought Moda's milk during the Ace cover story, I think that he would turn. Suru, I do not expect in the arc, but she is definitely sword by way of Drake. Naturally, Tashigi, Hina, and Dahl also are all gonna basically do whatever Smoker does. Maynard and Bastille were both with Fujitora during Dressrosa, but I'm kind of iffy if they're gonna turn or not. If I had to pick one or the other, I would say Maynard turns, Bastille stays Team Kizaru. And Team Kizaru is really basically Team Sakazuki anyway. Oda also has an opportunity here to, like, really flex some of the Vice Admirals that have had next to no screen time throughout the series, you know, like Cancer, Mozambia, uh, and also Momo Osaki and Chaton. You know, they were up for the Admiral position, but we don't really know anything about them. This chapter was a lot of fun, all right? And as always, we're not going to spend too much time on all of the fighting. I mean, basically, Luffy was running circles around Luchi, but that doesn't mean that Luchi is a bum, all right? He was doing his thing. Some people were saying that he didn't get any hits in. I actually think that he did. It was just off screen. When we see Luffy like go into the wall doing like his Wily e. Coyote bit, I think Luchi took advantage of the fact that Luffy was spinning and then knocked him in there. There's no reason to crack your neck if someone like self-sabotages themselves. So I think he actually knocked him into the wall and then took that moment. <laughs> Now, I am actually impressed with Luchi on one major factor here, okay? This dude took a Gomu Gomu no reverse third trimester right into his stomach, out his back, got essentially knocked out, but more or less 32 seconds to a minute later, he has put his whole outfit back together. Certified And the only drip. thing that's different is he's got a bandage on his, <laughs> under his eye. So his defensive prowess now is like on another level. Is he really going to be a problem for Luffy? Obviously not. But Luffy is going back into his old man form, which is just furthering our Tamate Bako theory that there is a correlation between these pills. Cody took the pill, turned all white. When he got out of the form, he turned old. Those pills were trying to replicate what Nika can do, okay? and. Why wouldn't people try to replicate what Nika can do? Vegapunk is literally trying to harness the power of the sun, right? And manufacture and, and, and just create unlimited energy. And what does Luffy do in this chapter itself? He materializes goggles from his hair or basically out of thin air. And shout out to Loggy Doggy, who was referring to how Vegapunk was discussing that there's energy all around us. So is Luffy taking that energy, harnessing it, and essentially turning energy into matter? Potentially. What I think is another possibility goes into what Vegapunk was talking about in the other chapter was that 
we're dealing with alternate dimensions. Now, what if we go further and deeper into this alternate dimension idea? And that that's what Luffy's doing, is that he's like tiptoeing between this other dimension, this other reality that he can completely control, and it's bleeding over into the real world of One Piece. Could it be that all Devil Fruits are just their own dimension and their pocket dimensions, kind of like Lamenko's fruit, but they're just bringing that to the light of this new world? Ultimately, we have to wait and see. Now, we did a lot of broad predictions that are going to possibly manifest over the next five to ten chapters. What do I expect more so in the next one to two chapters? Obviously, Kizaru touching down. Hopefully, landing by the sunny. If it's not him, then it's got to be Helmeppo and the rest of Sword. Oda's definitely got a plan for Zoro and Brooke. It's time for Oda to enact that. Because we're going to be essentially in this waiting game with Luffy and the rest in the Frontier Dome. And assuredly, the rest of the Straw Hats that are with the other Vegapunks are likely already in the Frontier Dome or on their way. Vegapunk should allow them to be able to move around the cabin at this point. I, I think he'll undo the magnetic locks. I think we need to see who our traitor is going to be this arc, which, you know, I'm still putting my bets on Lilith and I think we need to see more of an interaction there, whether we can, you know, trust these people, everything like that. That's got to come from her. But the thing here is that things are going to get crazy for Zoro and Brooke because they are not in the Frontier Dome. So we might get some really solid Zoro and Brooke action this arc. This could be, th this really could get exciting because it's the rest of them are safe and then they're just with the Sunny. It'll be fun. And that's going to wrap things up for 1070, everybody. Uh, depending on when this video comes out, I hope you have or had a great holiday. And uh, if I don't see you, a happy new year. I will be streaming prior to the new year. Uh, we're going to do our yearly wrap-up stream. So we're going to talk about our favorite moments of the year, favorite chapters, uh, favorite moments from streams, videos, anything like that, community moments. Uh, and more. So that's going to be the idea of the next stream. And then, you know, we'll get into 1071 when that's out. Since this is the last official chapter of the year, I want to thank everybody for your support this year. We went from starting the year just below 20k to ending the year just above 30k. That's, it's fun. We've strengthened the Savage Pirates tremendously. And, um, I'm about to get into all of the new members, which is uh, more than 50 names. So get ready for that, guys. <laughs> uh, like, comment, subscribe if you're feeling the vibe. And I will see everybody real soon. Shout out to our new members. Some of them are brand new. Some of them are, you know, rejoined here. Chrissy, Sean Powell, Original Kevin 97, The Real Andy Barr, Kevin Ablau. Nighthawk, Mariko, Honey, Marco Jake, Landon, G. Milla, A Lazy Player 1.B3, Dami Grone, Vampirius, Wrench Dodger 2000, Koala, Merch Hunter Ricky, King of One Piece, Six Pains, Loggy Doggy, Michael Mouton, Raul D. Gomez, Nolan P., Giovanni Velez, Drago, Mr. Riferola, Sean McDonough, Ahmad, Adam Cahoon, The Will of Dreams, Don Masama, Spicy Kimchi, Johnny Scarlet, Soul Guide, Chizemp, Kazez, Ohad, Carlos Diaz, Kaiju Kez, Court Press 87, JDB, Carmelo Smith, Steve Augustine, Jordan Bolton, Jolly D. Joestar, Ain't Me, Paul, Jeremy Stadler, Chief D. Hater, Fraud Hawk, Reuben, Jordan Lyle, Roden Spartan, Thea, Zachary Rauchi, Austin F., Hidden Leaf Shinobi, Jordy Albert. Those are all the new members, you know, because we had the, the Merry Christmas member gift giving. A uh, shout out to Fable, Barry, Emil, Ain't Me, and you know, everybody else that was throwing the, uh, the, the gift memberships around. <laughs> it's a fun one. All right, this has been a great year, guys. As always, appreciate your support. 
love the community that we have, and we're going to continue to build and, and grow together through this wonderful story. And I'll see you guys next time. Later. Savage. Savage.